A treasure trove of movie memorabilia that even most locals don't know about. And here you can probably see more things from Silent Era and Early Hollywood than anywhere else in the world. Charlie Chaplin's cameras, Mary Pickford's makeup kit, Cecil B. DeMille's trademark megaphone. They're all here in Hollywood's least visited museum. Close to half a million commuters drive by it every day, unaware of what's just beyond their view. If it looks out of place, that's because it is. It was moved here from another, more historic location in 1985. So it's kind of hidden away in that sense, but also kind of gives a look of how old Hollywood would have been at the time, too. The building itself may not look very important, but it is. In 1913, an aspiring director named Cecil B. DeMille rented this horse barn for $35 a month and used it to film interiors for The Squaw Man, the world's first feature-length film. A short time later, DeMille convinced two financial backers, Jesse Lasky and Sam Goldfish, to buy the barn and convert it into a permanent movie studio. And they kept going and staying here all that time and eventually built Paramount Pictures around it. Sam Goldfish eventually changed his name to Goldwyn and started his own studio across town. The barn stayed on the Paramount lot, but when more modern buildings made it obsolete, the barn became the studio gym. Some of the greatest names in the world did their work out and stayed in shape in that old barn. DeMille's office became the women's sauna room, the secret place where stars like Lana Turner would go to relax in the nude. But eventually, even Paramount didn't want the barn anymore and donated it to the city of Hollywood. The building was brought over here, reset, restored, now back to its historic shape, so it should hopefully last another 100 years now. The barn and its secret treasures is open to the public most days, 